All right, well, we have arrived here at Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, as you can see, while it is quite pretty, uh, the snow might pose a little bit of a challenge to us in finding some of the graves that we're wanting to take a look at today. I don't know why I do this to myself. I kind of have things backwards. I've been going to places in the south during the summertime whenever it's you know 142 degrees and then coming up to the north in the winter but anyway like i said it does look nice it is pretty now now crown hill uh the the first burial here uh was during the civil war and it is currently either the third or fourth largest cemetery in the united states which is going to make things even more difficult for us uh, I, I'm not sure which. I saw a sign that said fourth, and then there's a paper that said third, so I'll have to figure that out. But uh, anyway, this is the burial site of several different famous and historic figures in American history. So, like I said, we may have our work cut out for us today, but uh, we're going to do our best. Now, in our country, we give a lot of attention to our presidents, but sometimes our vice presidents get forgotten. Well, this cemetery is the final resting place of three U.S. vice presidents, including Thomas Marshall, who was the vice president for Woodrow Wilson. And here is the grave of Charles Fairbanks, who was the vice president for my favorite president, Teddy Roosevelt. And finally, here is the grave of Thomas Hendricks, who was the vice president of Grover Cleveland. So yeah, that's kind of cool that they have three vice presidents all here at Crown Hill. I've always been a really big fan of the Olympics. Uh, as a matter of fact, like once every four years, I'll find myself really caring about sports that I don't care about at any other time. And as far as the Olympics go, really the, the most fascinating games to me uh, would be the 1936 games in Berlin, which of course at that time uh, was Nazi Germany. Now, the most famous Olympian in those games was Jesse Owens, who was an African-American track star uh, who really performed well and kind of dispelled the myth of air and superiority uh, there at those games. But there was a, another African-American in those games who also won the gold medal, and he is buried right here. Now, I just used the word buried, but this doesn't look like a typical headstone, so I'm wondering if this is just a memorial and maybe he was cremated or something so I, I really don't know so don't gig me on this but anyway here's the uh, memorial to John Woodruff winner of the 800 meter race in the 1936 Berlin Games he went on to uh, serve in World War II uh, and also during the Korean War and retired as a lieutenant colonel yeah pretty cool well anybody who is familiar with this channel knows my affinity for guns. Well, how about the grave of Richard Gatling, the inventor of the Gatling gun? Of course, the uh, Gatling gun, kind of a precursor to the machine gun. Originally, it was six barrels on a rotating frame, and then I think later it was upgraded to 10. Uh, it was used a few times throughout the, the, the very end of the Civil War, nothing, nothing major and was used all the way through the Spanish-American War and was made obsolete by the Maxim machine gun. But uh, there you go, there is the grave of the inventor of the Gatling gun. Is 
as I've been walking and driving around, man, there are just so many different memorials and headstones that really are just works of art. I wish I had time to, to look at and explore them all. Now, this is not the grave of anyone noteworthy or famous in any way, but uh, I just thought that, that the memorial was, I don't know, quite nice. I guess the, the imagery here with the, the cross and the anchor being that for Joseph Locks, that, uh, that Christ was his anchor. Pretty cool. Here is a grave that some younger people might not be familiar with. And that is the grave of James Basket. Uh, this is the first African American male to win an Academy Award for his portrayal as Uncle Remus in the Disney movie Song of the South. Now the reason that it might be unfamiliar to younger people is that uh, the Disney company has essentially buried this movie due to some uh, racially problematic depictions of life in the post-Civil War South. Uh, they make it look like things were a lot better than, than they actually were. And uh, they have a memorial here as well. It says, kind of hard to read because of the glare, it says, Dedicated to the memory of Indianapolis native James Baskett for his Academy award-winning portrayal of master storyteller Uncle Remus in Walt Disney's 1946 movie Song of the South. And then it says, not in your day, not yet in my day, says Uncle Remus, but once upon a time. I have mixed feelings. Uh, it's kind of a shame that this movie has been buried because with it is buried a really great performance by the first African-American Academy Award winner. And anybody who is familiar with the movie is probably humming zippity doo dah in their head right now. For anyone who knows me, uh, whenever I die, if it's not just too terribly expensive, this is what I would like as my headstone. A stump. That's actually pretty dang cool. In February of 1862, during the Civil War, the uh, Union scored a big victory at Fort Donelson down in Tennessee. We actually have a, a video uh, on this channel where we go to that very location. Well, after the Union victory under the leadership of Grant, uh, the Union had about 15,000 Confederate prisoners that they didn't know what to do with. So they ended up being split up. Some of them went to Alton. Uh, again, that's another place that, that we visited on this channel. And some of them came here to Indiana, about 3,000 I believe, and were housed at a location known as Camp Morton. Now, throughout the Civil War, uh, these prisoner of war camps were, were not the most sanitary. There was a lot of disease, there was a lot of death. As a matter of fact, at Camp Morton, uh, there was a death rate of about 50 per month. And the remains of about 1,600 of those Confederate prisoners are right here at Crown Hill. Here they have an information panel about the Confederate cemetery here at Crown Hill. And they, they tell a little bit about Camp Morton. And, oh, hey, we've actually been there. Uh, that's at Alton. Interesting. Anyway, uh, it tells about how the uh, Confederates were originally buried at one location and then were disinterred and buried here. And uh, if you look... They have these bronze panels that give the names of every single Confederate POW that died here at Camp Morton. And there are a lot of names.
they have a section of the cemetery here that they call the Field of Valor. And right here at the apex of it, this monument, they have a plaque that says, In memory of Norman Scott, Medal of Honor, Rear Admiral, U.S. Navy, USS Atlanta, World War II, 1889 to 1942. Oh, Rear Admiral Scott, I believe, is one of two individuals of that rank to have been killed during World War II. And uh, he was on the USS Atlanta during the Battle of Guadalcanal whenever it got hit and uh, was killed there. And his body doesn't rest here in Indiana. It's at the bottom of the ocean, just off the coast of Guadalcanal. Hmm. The era of the the 1920s and uh, the 1930s uh, is is typified by you know being the era of prohibition and uh, with that being an era of extreme crime uh, there was a lot of famous gangsters and bank robbers that emerged out of this period uh, people like uh, Bonnie and Clyde and Babyface Nelson and uh, Al Capone and there is a famous gangster from that era that is buried here in section 40 of Crown Hill that we're going to try and find. Oh gosh, and we may have our work cut out for us because as you can see, the snow has covered all of these flat stones. So we're going to take a little look around and, and see if we can find this, this famous gangster that's buried here at Crown Hill. So here's what I'm dealing with right now with all of these flat stones uh, and of course whenever I came to Indianapolis I didn't think to bring a broom with me because I didn't think I would need it but anyway uh, we're going to keep looking so of all of the bank robbers of the 1920s and 30s one of the most infamous is this guy right here John Dillinger was accused of robbing several banks and a uh, few police stations and uh, ended up getting arrested in Arizona and um, escaped after he was extradited back to, to Indiana and then made his way up to Chicago. And he was staying at a brothel and the brothel owner informed on him and I think in July of 1934, uh, he was gunned down by police. And his final resting place is right here at Crown Hill. Huh. I didn't know if we were going to find this one. All right. Off to the last one. On this channel, I've mentioned that I've made it my own personal goal to visit the grave of every single U.S. president. So I've been to the graves of JFK, Taft, Jackson, and Polk. And now, right here in Indiana, is the grave of our 23rd president, Benjamin Harrison. So here is the final resting place of our 23rd president, Benjamin Harrison, who is the grandson of William Henry Harrison, making them the only grandfather-grandson pair that we've had as far as presidents go. And uh, he was also 
in the Civil War, was a lawyer, was president uh, whenever the Sherman Antitrust Act was passed. And, and buried here with him is his wife, Caroline Harrison. And uh, she actually died of tuberculosis um, while he was in office. And he ended up remarrying Caroline's niece, whose name was Mary Harrison. So all three of them are buried right here. All right, well that was the final resting place of our 23rd president, Benjamin Harrison. Now, I think it would probably be fair to say that Benjamin Harrison is not one of the more well-known of the U.S. presidents. Uh, but one thing that he was known for, uh, it was said that he was a, a good Christian man and uh, that he was honest and that he, he cared for others, which in the end, is probably the most that any of us could hope for whenever we uh, pass on from this life to the next. But uh, anyway, I'm really glad that we stopped here today. Uh, this is a, a fascinating place. It's huge and uh, yeah, there's so much to see. But that concludes our time here in Indiana. And uh, as for now, we are going to start making plans for the next place.